What's up everyone? Welcome back to another game tutorial. Today I'm gonna mix it up a little bit because we're going to make one game. This game, this planet, asteroid defense kind of game, but we're going to make it from start to finish. There won't be any shortcuts or presets in the project. We will set up the project in Unity. We will add all the necessary plugins or assets which you need. The assets will be downloadable as well, so you can just import it. And then step by step, we're gonna add the assets into the game. We're gonna make the particle effects, the finite state machines. We're gonna make a menu, a score counter, until you have a complete game with post-processing in the end and a lot of nice effects so you can actually post it to each IO at the end. That being said, let's get into it right away. So let's start in the Unity Hub and we're just gonna make a new project, of course with the latest version. I hope this is actually the latest version. I think it is. I'm gonna just take 2D and let's call it something like Planet Defense. Planet Defense, we're gonna create this one location wherever you like, and this will start up Unity. And as you can see in the background here, all the building blocks, I will also post them so you can download them. Great, so we have started the project, and before we start building anything, there is a couple things we want to um, install first, and for that, we're going to go to the Package Manager. And within the Package Manager, um, we're going to look in the Unity registry. And here we need to add a couple of topics. First is the universal rendering pipeline. This is very important. Let's install this one. Great. After we've installed the universal rendering pipeline, we're going to look for post processing. Great. And now there's two optional packages you could install. Uh, one is Cinemachine and the other one is TextMesh Pro. They're also owned by Unity. You can just install them. We won't deep dive them in this tutorial, but they're very useful for any other projects. So let's just go ahead and install those as well. And TextMesh Pro. Great, after finalizing this Unity registry, we're going to go to My Assets, and we're going to install Playmaker. You can, of course, also search for it, but let's import it. And then we're going to install Playmaker. There's also separate links to install Playmaker and the add-on of the ecosystem. Please check those out, so I'll just fast forward this. After installing, we go to add-ons. We're going to add the ecosystem browser. So there we go. Now we have the basics installed. You can see the layout changed a little bit. We have seen a machine added, Playmaker added, and also the add-ons here, the ecosystem browser is installed. And now we can finally start building our game. So before we're going to build, we're going to go in the assets. Let's create two folders. Let's call one rendering. And let's make one more folder. Let's call it building blocks to build our game in a bit. Let's first go to rendering. And here we're going to go to create a new one. Rendering universal render pipeline, pipeline asset forward renderer. And let's just make that and then we go to edit project settings graphics and here is scriptable render pipeline setting we're going to go to universal render pipeline great then we have that set up now everything should be based on a universal rp now let's go to the building blocks and start with our game so here I have the basic folder with all our building blocks. We've got some sounds, we've got the asteroid, we've got a planet, planet parts, uh, we've got a play button, um, thank you, text, a turret, and also another box. Let's just drag these all in and we will resort them inside Unity. Great, based on all these items, we will build our game. And let's first go to the main camera. Let's change the size to 25 
and let's put the z on minus 20 there we go let's also have gizmos on so we can see where so always press this button here so we can actually see where the camera is looking let's go to the color and let's have this kind of dark blue color let's say that should be the space background and some important topics to select here are press post rendering because this is now the universal render pipeline and now we can use post pre uh, post processing which is very important for later in the game and now let's start building so we've got the main camera we can also actually change the name of the scene if we want but let's just leave it sample scene for now and let me just drag in here the planet and the planet transform should always be zero out and I just want to make it capitalized and the planet will need a couple of things first of all let's add a rigid body rigid body 2d the gravity scale should be zero collision continuous and let's just do mass 10 because it's a planet <laughs> Then we're going to add um, Circle Collider 2D. And let's just make sure that this collider is a trigger. And we just want to fit it right around the planet because once the planet gets hit by an asteroid, the planet should be destroyed. Great. Now let's open the Playmaker window. And we're going to open the Playmaker editor here. Let's close this one. And let's just dock it here and now we can actually start adding fsms also the planet the, let's put the sorting layer there is a default let's add a sorting layer there and let's let's call it player level good go back to the planet player level and let's also add a tag here and let's call give this planet also a tag of planet so we know which to hit and what not to hit All right so there's our planet and with the circle collider the rigid body fsms the first fsm should be let's say rotate um, we're going to rotate the planet slightly because that of course makes it look cooler so the first state is very easy uh, rotate rotation and we're going to add a action which is called rotate there we go and we're just going to rotate the owner and the c angle should be minus 0 0.02 and we're going to do this every frame and this will already have our planet rotating. The next thing we want to add is a destroy planet. Oops, this should be the trigger action. And the FSM we're going to call destroy planet. Or you can also say, let's say, um, lose game. This is the planet tag. We're gonna add another tag, and this will be the enemy tag. We're gonna use it later. Let's go back to the planet. And then we're going to do on trigger, trigger to the event, and on trigger enter of the enemy. We're going to send the finish. We add it here, finished. And in the next one, we're going to, let's say, make the explosion of the planet. So we're going to create a particle effect. And we're going to create this object later. The spawn point should be here. And we should also play perhaps a random sound. Play random sound. And the random sound is a great tool to have, let's say, different <laughs> sounds. And I have like three explosion sounds. And I've got my sounds from the YouTube library and from this bfxr.net where you can just make sounds like <laughs> explosions, 
and you have uh, separate explosions and you can just change it a little bit up so then you have different sounds so let's have that and let's say here planet explodes all right and let's not forget to add this object later let's add finish and i think here we should just make a couple of explosions and then in the end destroy the planet let's leave it here let's uh, call this to to be continued as i need some other topics first to finalize this let's then put the turret in place I'm just going to drag in the turret here, and the turret's also on zero. Let's put it on the player level. And let me just drag it here a little bit to the left. Mm, the turret is perhaps a little bit too big here. So I'm just going to make this 0 0.8, 0 0.8. And perhaps the planet I can make a little bit bigger, something like this. 1.5 to get this a little bit of feeling the planet and it will look like this in game right now and uh, the turret we can just place it here um, position minus 10 looks great and the turret will also get a couple of topics it will get a and let's just give this also the tag of planet so it will also be destroyed when hit by an asteroid and the layer should be fine. Let's also add a circle collider here, which is then a trigger. And that seems all right. We could make it a little bit smaller if we wanted to, something like this. Let's also add a rigid body. Rigid body and gravity scale should be zero. Um, continuous collision detection, mass one is fine. Great, and the turret will have a couple FSMs. Let's start with the first one in which we rotate around the planet. Rotate planet. Let's call the state rotate. And we're going to get a action from the ecosystem. And we're going to use rotate around. Once that's in, we're going to just do rotate around and we're going to rotate around the planet and rotation point is actually zero 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 because the planet is in the middle but let's just select here the planet and rotation axis let's do this around the z zero point um, let's do zero point one and the angle let's do it 25 and let's do here per second if we would do only every frame and the frames are dropping then it will slow down so now already this one should be rotating around the planet that's the first fsm let's add one more fsm and in this fsm we're going to look at the mouse so this is an important one let's call this aim uh, at mouse and it's actually all in one state look at mouse and here we're going to add a couple of different actions get mouse and we're going to get the get mouse x and also the get mouse y and we want to normalize these and we're going to save them in new variables and let's call this mouse y and mouse x then we want screen to world point screen to world sorry so we want to get the locations of the screen towards the world and we're gonna get here mouse x and here mouse y and we're gonna store it in a new variable and let's call it world x new variable um, world y 
and we also want to normalize these normalized is here marked then we want to set factor we're gonna do set factor 2xy And let's just drag that down here. So we have the right order. Also, we should here mark every frame because you keep on getting these topics every frame. Also here, every frame. And we're going to add here factor two variable, which is, let's say, a new variable. This is mouse position. And the X is then here, world X and world Y. So now we have, let's say, a factor two with the mouse position in the world. And we're going to use then smooth look at 2D. And the target position 2D is mouse position. Yeah. And here is now an interesting topic. We have a rotation offset because usually it considers the picture facing to the right. So the turret facing to the right, but mine is facing downwards and I did it on purpose just to show this. So I want it to look downwards because my picture has a 90 degrees offset. So let me just put here minus 90 and speed. I recommend to put 15, but this is up to you. And let's very shortly demonstrate the things we've done so far. And as you can see, now we have already a turret, which is slowly moving around a rotating planet. So let's continue. And because in the planet, I also still needed some uh, particle effects and I'm gonna use a particle effect to shoot. I'm considering to let's make the particle effects which we will need in this game first. Great, and let's now also go here and create a new folder and let's call this materials. And let's also create a folder with particle effects. And in total, we want to make five particle effects. We want to have a laser shot. We want to have an explosion, an explosion of the planet, an explosion of the asteroids which are falling. We want to have particle effects for the stars in the background. So let's make them one by one and let's see what kind of materials we need then. So let's just start with creating an effect here and particle system and let's we can see it here is the particle system. And the first one, let's make the explosion laser beam. And we're gonna reuse some aspects of each particle effect. But let me just run through this for once. The start lifetime is 0 0.5. Start speed, 30. So it's very fast, as you can see. The start size, let's do between two cons constants, 0 0.2 and 0 0.6. We don't really need a start color. Um, let's continue. Max particles, 1000. Emission. And we want a burst, so let's put here a zero and let's add a burst of 50. And you can see now a burst coming out. And now the shape, this is quite important. The shape should be a sphere. And if we restart now, we can see that it's already bursting around it. Let's see it here. Color over lifetime is always an important topic to add to any particle effect. You click here. So what you're gonna do is set the alpha to, let's say uh, 250, so it's invisible. Uh, to the left, in the middle, it's visible. And at the end, it's again zero. So zero here, uh, 255 in the middle. You can do it on 50%. Let's add a little bit of noise, not too much. It's quite fast anyway. Let's do strength two. Frequency 0.5, so then you have a little bit of a shattering kind of feel. Then what's important is collision. 
and within collision we're going to select the world and we're going to select the 2d world so anything it's colliding with it will then uh, stop bouncing and what we're going to do is the damp 0.3 we add a little bounce of 0.3 and lifetime loss of 0.1 that's good and then we're going to add a trail let's also add a trail trails so let's restart and of course for the trail we're gonna oh this is a trigger sorry we're not gonna add a trigger we're gonna add a trail and there you can see it's now very ugly but it will get better and let's just have their particles uh, ratio one is fine lifetime let's do here 0 0.5 um and vertex 0 0.2 is fine and now it's important to add some uh, materials and for that we're going to make a couple of new materials and this is now the explosion of the laser so i'm going to create a material here and now it's universal render pipeline and i'm going to search here for um additive and i'm going to do legacy shaders particles additive and i'm going to select a picture of the assets which are in here and there's the laser light which i've imported earlier and let's call this material the laser material whoops and then we go here and we're going to just say the material of the of the trail is not this laser as you can see already quite a difference and this one particle unlit is is good for this material and here we have now a basic explosion and you can't really see it now nice because of the orange around but you will see it in a bit and just the rendering let's also just put this on the player level so it's in front there you go and this is now the first particle system let's go back to building blocks and this particle explosion laser beam we can just make a um, prefab out of this and always we're going to just add a Add a FSM there, and this one is always destroy self, and the state is weight five. Add a transition finished, finished, and destroy self, and we want to add this pretty much with each of the particle system so because we don't want this game to keep on making these systems and then they're just there so we're just going to destroy them after a while so overrides apply all so now it's also saved there so that's good uh, so we have a explosion of the laser beam and let's just duplicate this one and let's say explosion of the planet uh, now this is going to be a little bit more interesting perhaps because this is the destruction of the planet and we're going to do a couple of things here first of all we, let's drag it in here so it's a original prefab so it's a new one so we don't want the laser to be destroyed and it will also destroy but we're going to wait here for at least 10 seconds not that it matters because once the planet is exploding then you also lose the game great and in this particle system we're going to make a couple of changes uh, duration is five um see the lifetime should be now four and the start speed will be much less we're gonna be between two random two random and let's say um this is then 10 to 30. so there's the explosion going and the start size will also be different this will be two to seven 
as you can see, this is already a huge explosion. This doesn't really fit. Uh, we're going to readjust this in a little bit. Let's just do the speed 5 to 10. There we go. Um, start size perhaps 1 to 5 to 4. There, and then the shape is still here a, a sphere, which is fine. Color over lifetime. Here I want to change it. Here I'm going to not start with the zero alpha because I want the parts to show up and then slowly fade away. Yes. And here the rendering. We're going to make a new building blocks material. Let's make here again legacy shader particle. And let's just add here the planet part. There we go. And let's call this material planet parts explosion planet. Let's remove the burst is fine. Um, let's remove the noise. Collision is fine. Trails we turn off. And here we're now going to add the planets parts. Great, but what we have to add here, which is quite important, is the rotation over lifetime. And it's like 45. This is great. And the start rotation, we're going to random between two curves is 0 to 360. And then they all kind of turn randomly. And this is now how it looks. And we're just going to spawn a couple at one time. And then we have it destroyed. So that's pretty cool. This is the explosion of the planet. Let's also go to the planet. Planet explodes. And explosion planet. Let's do the overrides. Apply to all. This is now then the particle effect explosion planet. Once we go to the planet, we say explosion planet will spawn at the planet yes and we have a, a what we're also going to do is get an get one more ecosystem and this is then color and we want to get the set sprite color rgba then we're just going to get this Import it. So let's set color, set sprite color RGBA. And we're going to just choose the owner. And we're going to set the color here, alpha to zero. So, and then you can't see it anymore. So, planet alpha zero. happens it happens in an instant we're gonna wait or wait one and finish and what we're gonna do is here add another explosion and add one more sound actually we don't have to add the sound because this all happens in an instant and what we're going to do is then just copy paste the wait once more, once more, and once more. So we have like a couple explosions and then some, some explosions in a row. And then we're going to restart the game which is just a simple action, it's restart level. There we go. So these are now the, the, let's say the planet is now finished. Let's continue with making some more explosion effects and I'm just gonna copy and paste now the planet one. I'm just gonna select it here and let's, let's call this one explosion 
asteroid. And asteroid should be similar to the planet, just all a little bit smaller. And of course, I'm going to make a new material. Um, let's just do this part, starts with three to five. Um, or actually, you just do it like 10. And uh, start lifetime should be a little bit different. Um, let's do it 1.5. Start lifetime. And it is, of course, and one. Three, and you can see here, yeah, one to two is better. The start speed, five to 15, sounds great. It's actually a little bit too much in my opinion. So let's make this 0 0.5 and one. I don't want it to be that, that far out. That's good. For the rest, um, the size should be much smaller in this case. Let's do 0 0.1 and 0 0.4. Well, let's do one. There we go. And what we're going to do is go to the renderer. And in the building blocks, in the materials, let's make one more material. Let's call this asteroid part. And as always, additive. And here we're going to select the asteroid. Explosion asteroid. We're going to asteroid part. And now we will see some chunks of asteroids flying. I feel, still have the feeling that it's a little bit too fast. I'm just going to do 2 to 7. And the emission should be a little bit less. I would uh, think of the emission to do it, perhaps 30. Yes, let's leave it like this. And just the size, I still have the feeling it's a little bit big. Yes, so now it really looks like some small asteroid parts are flying around there. Okay, that's good. Now, while we're at it, um, let's save this as a prefab, of course. Original prefab. There we have it. And another important one is, let's copy paste the laser beam. And let's call this sky stars. <laughs> stars is fine. And this one has a speed of zero and a life of different life, three to five. And let's also just make here a new original prefab, but we don't really need a prefab because the stars are just gonna be there. We're gonna, don't do any noise. We're not going to do any collision, color over lifetime, that's fine. But we just have two start colors, random between two colors. And let's do perhaps some yellow stars and some like light blue stars. That seems pretty nice. Uh, let's do max particles, 10,000. Yes. I know this sounds crazy. Yes, the emission. And we're just going to do 2,000 over time. I know this sounds crazy. Whoops, that's 20,000, that's too much. Thank you very much. Let's remove this. We don't need any burst here. And the shape, let's do 60. Not yes. And let's just uh, put this one in the middle. Zero it out. And now you can see here some nice stars in the background. And perhaps we can just up the size a little bit. Number one. And then you have this really starry feel. Uh, now it's of course not good that they're in front of the planet. So let's uh, 
put this one on the default so now it's behind so we've got some stars i actually don't really like this orange ones but you can play around with this to get what you like and just make sure that you're satisfied with the star setup and perhaps there's a little bit too many stars if you say it's too many you can also just go to 1000 this will of course increase the performance and i actually also like it perhaps better on 1000 and here's your star background great and then we're going to make we're gonna duplicate this once more and as you can see this is the explosion of the laser which is pretty cool and let's make now the laser shot and the laser shot is the same as let's say the laser beam i'm just going to make here also a prefab original prefab and what we're going to do is instead of start speed will also be zero um start size is i think okay lifetime should be a little bit longer and emission this will be over time so let's remove this burst here we don't have any bursts oops let's remove it here and we're just going to do rate over time 100 then we're going to remove the noise and here we want to have the laser material there and the shape will be a box yes and let's just put the box 0 0.05 as you can see it's becoming a laser shot already and the y perhaps um, 1.5 And as you can see now here, I'm just gonna put it in front of the turret and then you have like kind of this laser shot. And I'm just gonna leave it like that for a second. And in game, it will just keep on existing there. And let's, let's go back to the scene. Let's go to the overrides, apply to all, because this is a prefab, whoops some reason it changed it now a little bit due to the size here perhaps here 0.5 was better after all so here we can see the effect 0.3 perhaps and what we want here is also pre-warm so it always is on overrides apply to all and that's great Great, so the laser shot, explosion asteroid planet, and laser beam are all done. And they're all here in the prefabs. Let's make sure that we didn't forget to save anything. The stars apply to all, it's also fine. And the laser is there. And now we can just remove the laser, remove the explosions because we have an all built now here, but the stars, they can remain because the stars are always in the background. And let's just add here a folder and let's of course zero out everything. And let's call this polish because this is actually already polishing the game a little bit. But now we can work because we have all the, all the particle effects already done. That being said, let's continue with the FSMs of the turret because the FSM has now aim at the mouse, rotate planet. And let's add one FSM as let's say destroy. And we're gonna add a trigger here. Trigger to defend, on trigger enter, enemy, send event, finished. finished yes destroy and we're just going to create a create object and the object is we're just gonna do explosion asteroid spawn point of course the turret gonna copy paste this we're gonna also make a laser not the laser shot sorry the explosion laser beam yes and let's also 
play sound, play random sound. And for the random sounds, we have now, let's say the explode asteroid, one, two, and three. One, two, and three. And the weight should be the same. Volume, yes, we're gonna do it high for this one, as well as for the planet. Explode one, two, three. It's also high because they're important when they explode. And then we're gonna say finish. And then we're going to destroy self. The, uh, destroy self. And that's one. And let's make now here a new. And let's call it here, create folder, prefabs. And I'm just gonna add a new one. And always be careful with the transform, as you can see, it just sometimes adds random things. Let's zero it out. And let's also make sure that all the others are, don't have any strange, the camera should of course be a little bit on a distance. And let's call this one the um, laser shot. And laser shot will be here. And we're going to add, of course, the laser shot to the laser shot. And we have to make sure. That's why it's always handy if we just zero it out once and also zero it out once and then make sure that they're both there. But now I'm just want to make sure that this is here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a component here. I'm going to add a rigid body. And the gravity is zero collision continuous. And I'm going to add here a small circle collider. Oops, and you see I made a mistake here because the laser shot is there. And this should be, of course, on the same location. The collider, this should be, of course, a trigger. Let's go to the laser shot. Um, and you can see here, there we go. The laser shot will also destroy itself after five seconds, which is fine. The laser shot will be shot very fast. And we're going to do now here two things. We're going to tag this as an A tag. Because it's our attack. And uh, let's make it a tag. The circle collider is a trigger. That's good. And here we're going to add one FSM. And this FSM is at velocity. And we have to play around here a little bit to get it right. But let's uh, just go in the first state. And what we're going to do is add relative force 2D. And because it's downwards, I'm also just going to do it with the Y. And I'm just going to say um, minus 3000. And I know that's a lot, but let's have a look uh, in a bit how this works out. And we just make sure that's pointing downwards. And it's always a relative force and relative force that based on which direction it's facing, then it will turn that way and also shoot that way. So let's call this add force. Now let's add here a trigger as well. Trigger to the event. And we're gonna do on trigger enemy we're gonna do finished and let's add in here um, and we're gonna also do no, on trigger enter should be fine and then we're going to explode and here we're gonna create an object Great object, and this is the explosion laser beam. 
and the spawn point is the laser shot. Very good. And we're going to add a transition right after, in which we're going to destroy destroy self. And what we want to add here as well is a wait. And let's wait for three seconds. And oops, then we don't want to finish. Um, we're going to add an event, new event, destroy. Because after three seconds, it should already be out of the screen and it should just destroy itself. Otherwise, we just keep on making particles uh, going all the way. Good. And this is now the laser shot. And we're going to make here a building blocks prefab of the laser shot. So this is now a prefab. And make sure that the tag is a tag. And I just shortly tested the speed and I'm just gonna update the Y speed to minus 1800 because that gave a little bit of better results. So let's just update that. And let's do the overrides, apply to all. And let's just remove the laser shot. And now we're going to back, go back to the turret to add the final FSM. And this is shooting, oops. FSM name should be shooting. The first state is shoot laser. And what we're gonna do is get mouse, whoops, mouse button down. And the left mouse button is fine in my opinion, but it could be anything in your game. And then we're going to finish. And here we're going to add a shoot. And this is now an important action, which we first have to get from the add-ons. We're going to go to the ecosystem browser and create object advanced is what we're going to need. Create object advanced. Oops, it's still, there we go. And what we want to add to the turret is create empty. And we're just gonna drag this down here a little bit. So let's say in front of the turret and, and let's call this the laser spawn. Let's go back to the turret. And what we're going to do is, First of all, we're going to wait. So there's your cooldown of shooting is 0. Point, let's say one. It's very fast, so you can really spam your shooting, but you have to click every time because get mouse button down. You have to click every time newly. And what we're going to do is get rotation And we're going to get the rotation of the laser spawn. And we're going to get an Euler angle. And we're going to, this is a factor tree variable. We're going to make a new variable. And let's just say it turret rotation. There we go. So then we know which rotation the turret is. And then we're going to create object advanced. Uh, this is quite important and we're going to create the laser shot we don't need to parent anything the spawn point should be the laser spawn yes and here we have the rotation is the turret rotation and because i before i put um, relative force the turret rotation should then make sure that the laser spawn or the laser shot is spawned in the right direction, adding the right force. And then of course, we're going to play a random sound. I'm not sure why I put it there, but let's just put this here at the end. And we have some laser shooting sounds. One, two, and three. And I'm just gonna, Put the volume a little bit lower, let's say 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 
so we don't want it to be too strong but of course we can fine tune this all later and this should finish then the turret and before we're going to test it make sure that the order of the actions is in the right order so first we want to get the rotation and then we're going to create object advance because it, the state will always do the actions in the order which they're created and then we're going to play the sound in the end and then wait to finish now what we also what i just noticed when trying before is that in the star we still have an fsm which we want to remove thank you very much override supply to all because the stars will just destroy themselves which we don't want obviously and let's give it a try now and if you can see now you can see i'm shooting the laser exactly in the direction where so this is a um, this we need to fix shortly in the uh, laser because currently it's on top and what we should do is just go to the particle effects laser shot let's drag it in here and let's just go to the renderer player level and let's just put it into order one so it's on top also in my opinion it's a little bit big and i'm just gonna reduce the size here a little bit to one and i'm gonna just apply it to all and I'm just gonna do restart overrides and i'm just gonna remove it now and now it also should fly over the planet Great, so we've got the planet set up, we've got the turret set up, and the turret can shoot in all directions, but we don't have an enemy yet. So let's try to create an enemy next. So let's go to building blocks, and I'm just going to drag in here the asteroids. It's zeroed out, which is great. Um, let's also just put it in the player level. Let's put it in one. And here it is. It's a little bit small if you ask me so let's just um, scale it a little bit something like this make it a little bit bigger even let's just put the game so the asteroids are like this size even let's make it just yeah let's make it three and a half there we go so we have an asteroid here and the asteroid will also have a couple of FSMs. But before we add the FSMs, let's add a couple of, let's add a, let's add two circle colliders. And the first one is a trigger. And then let's add one more circle collider, which is a normal collider. And now we have to be careful which one we <laughs> changed. So this one is the trigger. The big one outside should be outside is fine. And we also get a add a rigid body, rigid body 2D. And the rigid body 2D, just make sure that the gravity scale is zero. Collision detection is continuous. We're gonna leave it like that. Let's close the circle colliders and let's make sure that this has the tag of a enemy. So the moment this asteroid hits our turret or the planet, they will be destroyed. Now let's add the FSMs, add the first FSM, and let's call this one uh, destroy, because once it gets hit by a laser, it should be destroyed. And what we're gonna do is trigger to the event, on trigger enter, and attack. We're going to finish. And let's call this just a trigger. And we also, because we added a collider, collision to the event as well. Collide tag, tag. We're gonna finish. So these two are the triggers. And we also gonna add 
a trigger to the event on the planet and both the turret and the planet have the planet tag so once it hits the planet it will also be destroyed that's great let's add a new state here explode and we're going to create an object normal one and before we had there's some particle effects always let's make sure to lock this one and explosion asteroid spawn point is also the asteroid i'm gonna play random random sound and we've had these sounds here before exploding asteroids one two and three and let's also remove put the volume a little bit down 0.6 and we're gonna send an event and this is gonna be interesting we're gonna send a new event at the end here and we're gonna broadcast this event and this is a global event and this will be called <laughs> this will be called at points because this will and we're just gonna send this global event and once that's happened we're going to destroy self there we go so this is uh, the first fsm which we need and now we want the asteroid to move towards the planet so we're going to add one more fsm and let's call this move towards planet and here we're going to add a random float random float and this is a very handy trick um, and let's say two to six because this will be the speed and store in a new variable is the speed and then we're going to add move towards and because our planet is in let's say the uh, zero zero in the middle of the screen we don't need to change here anything we're just gonna target objective none target position will be zero 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 and the speed will be speed which will be a random speed and let's just move it away so you can already see the disk this mode that it wants to go there there let's call the state also move towards there we go and then we are going to add fsm and let's call this the random rotate so the asteroid will be rotating randomly and what we're going to do is again a random float and this time it should be between let's say 10 and 80 and let's make a new um, variable here and let's call it asteroid rotation then we're going to go to rotate uh, rotate just here to transform rotate and as always make sure the random float is above and then the z we will do asteroid rotation and let's do this per seconds and every frame and let's call this here rotate or random rotate and of course we only want to random float once and then it will just rotate there and if we're going to look now, we can see that the asteroid is rotating and it's moving towards the planet. At the moment I shoot it, it's destroyed and it makes an explosion sound. So that worked pretty well. I just want to do one thing here. Uh, uh, this is the explosion of the asteroid. I want to reduce the weight here to, let's say, uh, four seconds and then it should destroy itself because it restarted its particle effect after five seconds this is of course not what we want so it should be working now great so we've got the basics now uh, done and these asteroids here um, the asteroid can be made as a prefab 
great and let's remove it here and now we need a way to spawn in the asteroids from all directions and for that i'm gonna create an empty first and let me just zero this out and let's call this the uh, asteroid controller great and let's add an empty here and let's call this the the asteroid manager that seems seems like a great <laughs> a great one and let's uh, copy this one down and let's make this one the spawner um, asteroid spawn spawner bottom and let's just put this one to perhaps minus 35 sounds sounds pretty good so off screen of course and then we're gonna spawn in the asteroids and they're gonna go in there and the asteroid manager let's make the FSM here first and what we're going to do is add a FSM and we're gonna start with the idle and within the idle we're gonna set a one action and this is set float value float value and the float variable is a new global variable and let's call this one the wave spawn timer because we're gonna spawn um, the asteroid in different waves and in each wave it will spawn the asteroids faster and we're gonna set it to five so we've set the wave spawn timer and then we're going to control the waves so we're gonna let's say make a global transition and for that we're going to go to events and let's make it start and this is a global event so let's say other fsms can target that state and we're going to start and here we're going to have then wave wave one because we will start with wave one and within the wave one we will have a wait because each wave should take a certain amount of time and let's call it then here 30 seconds let's call it finished finished and here we're going to also send an event because we're going to send an event to all the different asteroid spawners and this event um, i'm going to broadcast it and let's call a new global event and let's call it uh, initiate wave there we go and we're just going to start with that so once the game starts when i press start then i will trigger this start event and then i'm going to initiate wave and then after 30 seconds i'm going to make a new state and this is then called wave two and in wave two i'm actually just gonna copy and paste these two over but we're going to change one thing here and we're of course going to add the finish here again but we're also going to set set float value of this global wave spawn timer to four because now the asteroids will be spawned faster and then we're also gonna change it in the wave three four and five so let's just add those waves three and then the wave three the timer will be three and then we're gonna add wave four and the timer will be two and wave five it will be one and we make a new state as win game and in the win game we will add a couple of of items but we're gonna add them a little bit later so let's first make sure that the spawners will actually work accordingly so let's go to the asteroid spawner press here lock so we want to go to a different fsm and the asteroid spawner is actually quite simple we're going to add a fsm spawn 
asteroid. And we're going to start here with the idle. And before we made this global transition of custom events, and this is initiate wave, which is then here. And initiate wave will be then create asteroid. And what we're going to do is create a object. And what we will do here, this is then a trick. We're going to create a asteroid. And the spawn point is the asteroid spawner bottom. But we will have a position offset here. And here we're going to make a new variable. And let's call this then spawn area. And how we're going to do this, we said we're going to get a random float. And this random float should be minus 60 to 60. And let's test this. So minus 60 is here. And you have then 60 here, which is pretty much the angle of which the asteroid should be coming in. And let's just uh, make a new variable here. And let's call this the uh, x axis, something like this. Set factor 3 x, y, z. Let's drag it above here. And let's call this the new variable spawn area vector. Oh, no, sorry. This is then, of course, the spawn area. So let's uh, remove this spawn area vector. This is the spawn area. And what we're going to do is the the x, because we are moving now on the x, should be the x axis here. And then you will have random locations here. Then we're going to create the asteroid. So first, it will make a random float. It will save it in the factor 3, x, y, z. Then it will go to create object to the asteroid. And then we finish. And what we're going to do here is the wait. And we're just going to do wait. And the wait time here is, you guessed it, is the global wave spawn timer. And once the wave spawn timer is finished, we're going to back to respawn any other asteroid. So in wave one, it should only spawn six asteroids. Great. And now we're just going to duplicate this once. And let's call this top. And instead of minus 35, I'm just going to do uh, 35. So it's here on top. And the spawn area should now be on the top and the other values are still correct in this case great and now i'm just gonna copy paste this one and let's call it left and let's try to align it here um minus 60 this time and the y is just zeroed and here now we have to Consider, let's say, minus 30 or 35. What well, actually, perhaps this is better to spawn it here at minus 50. And then let's just pull it up here to 30 and minus 30. So what we're going to do is 30, or let's say minus 30 and 30. And let's call this then a new variable, the y axis, because otherwise we will be confused. And here's none. And the y axis should be now be the y axis. Thank you very much. And the asteroid is now spawned in the spawner left. And the spawn area is then, of course, in the y axis, just making the y random there. Copy paste it to the right side. Let's just put here 50. Change the name. Right. And this should already work now. 
Great. If we're going to start now, so if we start now, nothing will happen because nothing is initiating the wave. So for that, we will add now a couple of uh, UI items to show which wave we are at and what score we have and also to start the game. So let's set that up. Let's add the user interface. And uh, let's just go here and we're gonna go to UI and let's have a look. Let's first add a image there. And as you can see, it's always spawned here on top. And what we're gonna do is, and let's go to building blocks. And um, I think I have a wave here. Just gonna add a sprite wave. It's always important to set the native size and then resize it accordingly. So let's perhaps scale it to 0 0.2, oops, and 0 0.2. And let's make sure to put it here in the upper left and also make sure that this is here, upper left. So in case the, the screen is changed now, it will be changed. And let's call this one the wave. And let's duplicate this one and let's call this one the score. And let's just grab in here the score as well. Let's pull it over here. The score is now a little bit strange. I'm just going to set it to native size and it's already 0 0.2. Just going to put this here. And let's also lock it to the upper right corner. Great. And as you can see now in game, you already have these two things. Let's also just uh, stick here. Let's copy paste this again. And let's add a play button. Play, we're gonna set to native size. And this one, let's put it here one, one first of all. And um, still too big. <laughs> let's just make it 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 let's go here still a little bit big in my opinion perhaps this is a little bit too small play around with it however you like it and make sure that this one is bound here to perhaps the upper side and let's just try to put him in the middle just put it on the zero here and drag it up a little bit and let's drag it up a little bit more. So we have here a nice play button. And the play button is also a button. So what we're gonna do is add a button here. And this is quite important. Uh, this also added the event system earlier. So that's good. We have a play button. And uh, let's do the normal color should be white, but highlighted color perhaps we can just make red and press color also we just have it red that's good and here let's add a fsm yes and what we're going to do is ui button we're going to add the ui button on click event so the moment someone presses here on this square you will send an event and let's say mouse click. Then we're gonna go here, start the game. And here we're gonna send an event and not to self, to a game object. And this is then the asteroid manager. Sorry, no, send event to a game object FSM, specify game object, asteroid manager, and FSM name, we didn't give it a name. That's of course the manager here. Can't spell, let's go back to play. And we're gonna set the manager and we're gonna send a start in this case, because that's the global manager. And we're gonna finish this one. And what we're going to do is destroy 
destroy component. Sorry, objects. We're going to destroy objects, not component. And we're going to add, add two objects here. It's going to be play. And now I have to be careful. Let me duplicate this one and let's call this one exit. Just going to drag it down here. Make this to the bottom. And there should always be an exit here. Set native size. Very nice. What I'm going to do is I'm going to destroy play and exit so they just disappear. And in the exit, I'm just going to not send an event. I'm going to quit application. Um, application, quit. There we go. Let's remove the transition because we don't need a transition. We're just going to exit the game the moment we press exit. The moment we play, we're going to start the game. So we're going to initiate the asteroid manager. So it will initiate wave one because it will send it to all the waves. And it will also then destroy play and exit. And what we still want to control now is the wave the score and to also make a let's say end screen the moment you win the game so first of all let's go to the wave and then below the wave we're going to add a ui and we can add a text mesh pro but in this case i'm just going to add a text here and let's add here wave one let's zoom in a little bit and let's make sure that we are going to set overflow here overflow change the color to one in white um let's make it bold the size is not big enough for me um for some reason we need very big sizes here still a little bit big if you ask me 250 200 just gonna put this here and let's call this the wave counter yes and let's just duplicate this i'm just gonna add it here to score let's call this the score counter and this one of course we're gonna drag then over here and also just want to make sure to bind it to the upper left there score counter and as you can see you can see now see one and score also one and score counter here should be starting with a zero and if you want to add here other fonts perhaps we'll, well there is a standard verdana font perhaps let's use that it's actually pretty nice but you can of course add their different fonts and with text mesh pro you can even make it nicer and i'm just going to make sure that it's a little bit to my liking here there the score as well let's put it 180 there but it looks quite all right and now of course we want to manipulate those numbers and let's start with the wave counter and the asteroid manager and perhaps we can just uh, wave counter at the start we set it to zero wave zero and then in the asteroid manager in wave one we're gonna set ui text uh, ui text set text <laughs> great and then we're going to specify the game object of course we're going to add the wave counter here and let's set it here to one and then here we're going to set it to two and here we're going to set it to three four oops five so i'm not this was just a manual update in this case yes and here i'm going to just wait 25 and finish so you have 25 seconds to clear the wave five so you have let's say 25 seconds to to win win game 
in game for real. And here I'm just going to destroy objects. And let's do two. And I'm just going to destroy the wave and the score. And the children as well. So that's going to be then gone. That's great. And let's also update. No, let's, before we update anything. So, and let's add the thank you here. And let's make it a little bit bigger. Three, three, four, four. four. Thank you for playing. Let's just put this up there. Let's close this canvas down. And this is, let's say, the polish. And let's duplicate this and remove the sprite render. And let's say this is the target. And let's zero this out, by the way. Let's have it exactly in the middle. The target we're just going to drag down here. And what we're going to do in the asteroid controller, the manager, is we're going to move object. And we're going to specify a game object. And we're going to move the thank you to the target. And let's give it three seconds. Great. So there we already have the thank you. And now we still want to update the score because it's currently not updated and the score is a little bit, I don't like it. Let's see if the score counter is uh, not really in position. Always when you click here, just press F and you focus. And let's just make sure that it's on the same height. Something like that, that already looks better. Yes, very good. And what we're gonna add here is a create empty Let's make sure to zero it all out. I'm going to go into the scene. Let's focus on it. So here's the scene. And let's call this the score manager. Let's add FSM to the score manager. And the FSM is the score counter. Let's go to the state. And the first state is the idle state. Yes. And in the idle, we're going to set int value. And the int value in new variable, let's call this score points. And it should be zero. And let's also set string value. And the string variable should also be zero. And this is actual score. Great. And now here, we're going to add a global transition, custom events, add points. And I'm not sure if you remember, but on the asteroids prefab, there is a broadcast. At the moment, it gets destroyed that it adds point. And this is the event we want to send. Add points. And what we're going to do is int add and we're going to score points here and let's add 10 points so let's say add point then we're going to add a trans oops add a normal transition finished let's say update score and what we do here first of all is convert int to string and the integer value is the score point and we're going to look at the actual score here what we're going to do is ui text set text then of course we want to specify an object and there we have a score counter and the text should then be a string which is the actual score yep. And let's give it a short try and see how far our game has come. And as you can see, as long as I float above the play and exit, and then I can click.
and I wish I could click, but I didn't send an event here. Make sure on the mouse click to also finish and also on the exit here to finish. And let's try it again. And let's press play. So play and score are gone. And we are now in business. And as you can see, the asteroids are coming in on a random speed. And this is now still wave one. So let's see if it will actually update to wave two in a bit. And perhaps let's go to the wave asteroid controller. Whoops, I shouldn't kill myself. Oh, it's already in wave two. You can see that it was updated and the asteroids are coming with more speed now already. Perhaps we realize that it's uh, already quite difficult in wave two. And perhaps we also notice that the shooting is perhaps a little bit too slow. So if you want to change that for our liking, then you can just update this. And also, of course, the game will be easier if you put the turret closer to the planet. That's a little bit the difficulty. And let's just see what happens once the yep, the planet will be destroyed and everything is there destroyed. And then you can restart. So let's just polish it a little bit. So in the polish, first of all, the stars, they should be pre-warmed. That's very good. And let's add some more polish. Let's first of all go to the prefabs of the laser shot. And in my opinion, it should shoot a little bit faster. Just going to update this to 2000. Apply to all. Just going to delete it again. That's that's one thing I want to do. And let's add an empty. Let's zero it out. Let's call this mouse cursor. Because the mouse is not so nice, right? And you all must have been wondering, hey, when is the mouse cursor coming? Let's add a FSM and mouse, set mouse cursor. And what we're going to do is add the cursor here. And now it, and we're going to hide the normal, so the normal mouse, hide cursor. Very good. Um, let's also add a volume. Let's add a global volume. And as always, make sure to zero it out. And let's add these things to polish global volume and let's make a new profile, add override, uh, post processing. And what I really like to add to such a game is a vignette. And let's just make a color black and center and intensity. And you can see now here this black coming out. This is always very cool. And yeah, let's just do 0 0.4 or something to have there a little bit. And then a smoothness. This is the smoothness, how you can do it. Let's also just to put 0 0.2. And if you look now in game, this has now a little bit darker circle around it, but you can play around with that however you like. And you can also add some other uh, effects, like uh, there's a lot, color adjustments, um, film grain is pretty cool as well. Let's add a, a little bit of grain here. If you add a lot, then you have this kind of, uh, you can see it here now. Um, once you play, we can see it because you can add like grain. Just Let's just add a little bit here. And that's already looks very nice. Um, create empty music because I have the music there. Let's call, um, or what we should actually do is just track this in. Audio source, play on awake. Let's also loop volume. Always play around with this. Could be too loud, could be too soft. Just gonna put it like this. Great, so we've got some music added now as well. 
and this should kind of finalize the polish so let's give it one more try on a max uh, maximize on play so the music is playing it's quite nice let's start that's wave one I still have the feeling that my laser is a little bit slow. But we can just play now here. And I just realized now that the sound is a little bit too loud of the of the music this happens often so let's try to get this down um, let's do it 3d then let's drag everything here down so volume should be down it should just be all be down And perhaps the sounds of the laser shot and the explosion should just go up a little bit. But you can just uh, play around with this until you come to a certain level which you like. So I'm just going to update that shortly. Wait one, destroy it, explode. Volume one. some reason the music is still super loud so the volume is still high so I'm just gonna put the volume here down to let's say 0 0.2 because the music is just too loud for me and 0 0.15 should be fine I think um, let's just leave it like that so that's all quite nice and with that you have pretty much like finished your first game it is a very simple game but as you can see it works and of course play it until the end to see if the thank you also works but we can of course just test this very quickly by just going to the asteroid controller and let's just uh, after wave one let's just uh, win the game just to test it Thank you for playing. And one thing which we forgot. So as you could see, it worked. The thank you text came in. But what we want to do here as well. Um, And this is here. We're going to destroy objects. And you always forget something. Just gonna add here four. And I just want to destroy all these. Oops, should be the top. Right. So at the end of this one will be destroyed, but you still have let's say um, 
25 seconds to destroy the remaining asteroids. I think 20 seconds should be enough. Um, and then uh, you're going to destroy the wave score and the thank you comes in and great. And what you could do is then add a transition and you can quit the application or just restart it again after a certain amount of time. This is up to you. Or you can just leave it like that and or just respawn an exit button. This is all possible. Great, so now you have the game working. Let's go to now um, build settings. And this is quite important. So we can have a Windows version and also a WebGL version. Let's first of all build a Windows version. But what we're going to do is, of course, add a icon. And what we couldn't add here is perhaps the turret. Or the planet. I think the planet might be better. Oh, not default cursor. Sorry about that. We're not gonna. So here you can actually also put the cursor, <laughs> just so you know. And the default icon, just there. Version. Uh, put your company name. Put your name. You can add all these kind of things here. Great. And uh, let's build this one. Um, and let's just call it Planet Defense Windows. Now let's make this then. Let's make a new folder. Yeah, of course, we're going to save the scene. Let's build this one. So once it's built, you can just start it up and we can play our game. And of course, also make then a itch.io page and publish the game. And I think this is a great game, which you can also use for any, let's say, game jam. Or you can make variations, for example, you could make the turret also at the bottom side, make the asteroids come from top to down. So this brings us to the end of this tutorial. I think with the skills you've learned, you can make a lot of variants of this game. And I would love to see uh, what you will do with it. So if you post any game on itch.io and actually publish it, please share it with me as well on the Discord uh, channel or within the YouTube comments and so that I can have a look at it. And I hope you actually liked the video. And if you liked it, please hit that like button and subscribe. It will help me and uh, it will also motivate me to make more videos. And I will see you all in the next one. Cheers.